and welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. There is... There, there is just so much news coming out of the White House these days, and some of it they actually want you to know. <laughs> that news is called leaks, and uh, right now the Trump administration is obsessed with them. It all started with a horrible comment about John McCain made by White House aide and flight attendant telling you to get back to coach <laughs> Kelly Sadler. After the ailing senator announced that he opposed Trump's pick for the CIA, Gina Haspel, Sadler said of McCain, it doesn't matter, he's dying anyway. <laughs> Kelly. Oh. Kelly, you don't know that for sure. Medical science can do wonders, though sadly for you, there is no cure for ass. <laughs> Stitch it up. We could stitch it up. Sadler uh, called Meghan McCain after this, but she's never publicly apologized, and neither has the White House. In fact, White House officials seem more upset that the story leaked than that Sadler said it. Sources say a visibly angry Sarah Huckabee Sanders told her team, I'm sure this conversation is going to leak too, and that's just disgusting. <laughs> Really? Well, if you're so sure it's going to leak, maybe leak something nice. We are instituting a casual Friday policy all summer, and I brought bagels for everybody. Gee, I hope it doesn't leak. What a fun, nice boss I am. <laughs> this White House is so leaky, there are even leaks about why they're leaking. <laughs> One leaker leaked. To be honest, it probably falls into a couple of categories. The first is personal vendettas, and two is to make sure there's an accurate record of what's really going on in the White House. Oh, there's already an accurate record of what's going on in the White House. It's called Boss Baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it, right? Okay. That, that. It's either that or American Horror Story. I forgot which one is the documentary. Another official explained that staffers use leaks as weapons against each other, saying, you have to realize that working here is kind of like being in a never-ending Mexican standoff, <laughs> a phrase that contains two of Trump's least favorite words, <laughs> Mexican and stand. <laughs> and one, one White House leaker says he leaked for the thrill, saying, it's like playing with matches. Well, that's perfect, because lighting a match in the White House is a good way to cover the smell of all the crap. <laughs> now, oh, oh, oh. Crap fans. love it. Kids, kids love the crap. Now, the White House has tried desperately to identify the leakers, but at least one official has a system saying, to cover my tracks, I usually pay attention to other staffers' idioms and use that in my background quotes. <laughs> That throws the scent off of me. He added, sad, witch hunt, fake news, I want to sleep with a porn star. I wish I was married to Sean Hannity. And these leaks are making the president furious. Yesterday he tweeted, the so-called leaks coming out of the White House are a massive over-exaggeration put out by the fake news media in order to make us look as bad as possible. And I know a thing or two about exaggeration. Did you see the size of my inauguration crowd? Unbelievable. <laughs> Trump continued, with that being said, leakers are traitors and cowards, and we will find out who they are. So, Trump says the White House isn't full of leakers, which is why he's going to hunt them down. <laughs> I just found out, I just found out there's no Easter Bunny, and I'm going to waterboard him until he admits he doesn't exist. Uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand why Trump even cares about leaks. Because these days, he's not even trying to hide his dirt anymore. Earlier this week, everybody was baffled when Trump tweeted, President Xi of China and I are working together to give massive Chinese phone company ZTE a way to get back into business fast. Too many jobs in China lost. What? That... Jobs in China? 
That's the exact opposite of everything he has ever said. What's next? Short ties? <laughs> but now it all makes sense. Because Trump tweeted out that announcement a mere 72 hours after the Chinese government agreed to put a half a billion dollars into an Indonesian project that will personally enrich, any guesses? Donald Trump. He's not even trying to be subtle. Meet me outside the parking garage in broad daylight. I'll be the one shouting, I'm taking bribes over here. <laughs> turns out, it is shocking. It turns out the Trump Organization is getting money from the developer of a theme park resort outside of Jakarta, who has a deal to license the Trump name to the resort. Why would you want Trump's name on your theme park? Is the theme bankruptcy? <laughs> but I gotta say, Bankruptcy. <laughs> Chapter 11. Hey. I gotta say, a Trump theme park does open up a lot of ride possibilities, including Splash Mattress, <laughs> Big Stormy Mountain Railroad, <laughs> The Hall of President, and Mr. Pence's Mild Ride. <laughs> but, you know, I go on that. I don't like, I like, I don't like, I don't like rides. But maybe Trump didn't do this just to enrich himself. Maybe he did it to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Because if talks with North Korea move forward, Trump is going to need China's help, and China knows it. So last month, when Trump officials visited Beijing, the Chinese government wrote up a document with a list of economic and trade demands, one of which was appropriately handling the ZTE case to secure global supply chain. So he immediately gave in on one of the demands. I guess that explains why the first chapter of The Art of the Deal is fold like an origami swan. <laughs> now, it's a beautiful culture. It's, beautiful, it's a beautiful art form. <laughs> now, we don't know everything on the Chinese wish list, but sources who've seen all the demands describe them as ranging from the reasonable to the ridiculous which, coincidentally, is also the title of future U.S. history books. 